In this tutorial, we're going to do some simple but powerful edits on these three photos. This will give you a great idea of what's possible with some of the essential adjustments in Capture One. Let's start with the photo in the viewer here. Before I do anything else, I tend to prefer to crop my picture. So I hit C on my keyboard to choose my crop cursor tool and then crop in a little tighter. And if I hover over the corner, I can rotate this a few degrees as well. I can see overall that the photo is a little on the dark side. So I'll start by raising up the exposure and I'll also add in some brightness. Now brightness varies slightly because this slider generally affects more of the midtones. So it's not going to brighten too much the highlights in the area that I want to retain. So in particular, this area here in the background. As there's some nice light coming through the trees, I feel I would like it to be warmer. So I'm going to raise my Kelvin value to around here. Now the exposure adjustments and brightness adjustments have worked out great, but I do just wanna make sure I'm keeping all that highlight detail. So in the high dynamic range tool, I'll bring down my highlights, but in particular, I'm going to pull the white slider down. The white slider will really affect the brightest tones in the image. So if I pull this one down, it's going to bring those details back up in the smoke just here. And we can see that if I long press on the white slider, that will do a before and after. So it's bringing that detail back nicely. I'll open up the shadows a small amount, but to make sure the photo isn't too flat overall, I'm going to pull the blacks down, which will darken those darker areas in the photo. I'll add some clarity, which will add a nice mid-tone contrast without affecting my shadows and highlights too much. And finally, I'll finish off with a vignette to draw some focus into the center a bit more. And there we have it. If I turn on the before and after view, we can drag the slider across and see before and after. So with only a few simple adjustments, we've made quite some difference to this photo. On this photo, we're gonna work with it in a similar way to the first one, but we'll also add in some style brushes to deal with some varying exposure and the slight redness, which we're gonna see on the surface face. First of all, in the shape tool tab, I'm going to start with an auto rotate. So I'll click the magic wand here and that will rotate the image nicely for me so it's straight and level. Moving to the Adjust tab, I can definitely see that this is too dark, so I'll bring up the exposure, and like in the first photo, also some brightness as well, so I retain the highlights in the sky in the background. In the Levels tool, I can see that there's not a great deal of information in the tonal range towards the highlight end, so I'll click Auto in the Levels tool, and that will set my black point and white point and make sure the image is nice and contrasty and not too flat looking. Down in the high dynamic range tool, I'll recover some of the shadows in the wetsuit and reduce the highlights a small amount to make sure we're getting all that detail in the sky. Scrolling down to the clarity tool, I'll boost that to add myself some nice mid-tone contrast but now I'd like to brighten the surface face by a small amount, and I'll do that by using a style brush. Looking at the built-in style brushes, I'll open up the light and contrast category and choose the dodge brighten brush. I'll also expand the layers tool so we can see what's going on there. By choosing the dodge style brush, Capture One has already selected the brush cursor tool for me. And if I right click, I can access the brush settings and make my brush a little larger. All I need to do now is a few brushes over the surface face and that will gradually lighten it up until I feel it looks better. If I've done it too much, I can easily go to the opacity slider and drag that down to have no adjustment or something that gives the right balance around here. If I zoom in a couple of steps, I can see there's a bit of redness around uh, the nose and a small amount on the forehead. So I use another style brush under enhancements 
called Red Skin Reduction. Once again, I'll right click to make my brush a bit smaller and then brush on those problem areas in the middle. So just around here and a little bit on the forehead and cheeks like so. Turning off that layer, Red Skin Reduction, you can see a new one has been created. We can see the improvement in the center of our surface face. Finally, to finish off, I'll add a small vignette and hit C on my keyboard and finish by adjusting my cropping. In this photo, I've already made some basic adjustments uh, that you can see if I turn on the before and after view. But what I want to focus on mainly in this edit is using the color editor. I'd like to push the color of the underwater portion of the sea a bit more to the teal range. If you're not sure which color patch you should be adjusting in the basic color editor, grab the color picker and simply click on the color tone you wish to edit. And what I want to do is push this color closer to its neighbor. So all I need to do is drag the hue slider in that direction and you can see the color shift. I'll also make it a tiny bit darker as well. Next, I'd like to make the blue sky a bit darker and a bit more saturated. So my color pick is still selected. So I'll click on the sky once more and I'll up the saturation and pull down the lightness. Finally, the crates that are hanging on the boat, I would prefer to push them a little bit more towards uh, the red tones and darken them slightly. And another way of using the color picker is to use it as the direct color editor. So if I click and hold on one of these crates, momentarily you'll see a four-way cursor pop up and then disappear. So all I need to do now is keep holding my mouse and as soon as I drag left or right, Capture One will identify the correct color patches. And one advantage here is that we can adjust more than one color patch at the same time. So if I drag more to the left, you can see the hue changing. If I drag downwards, I can reduce the saturation. And if I drag upwards, I can increase the saturation. And finally, to modify the lightness, if I hold down Alt on my keyboard and drag to the left, I can then make that color tone darker. So that's a really nice, fast way of editing color directly on the photo. Let's see what influence those color edits have had. So if I hold my Alt key down and click on the reset button in the color editor, we can see before and after of just those color edits. The advanced color editor will give you more options in terms of color range and saturation range, but the basic color editor is still extremely powerful and very quick to use for those fast color edits.